Design Voices from Development Perspectives. Hello, I'm Tulip. Welcome to Amplifying Voices, Episode 3. This episode of Amplifying Voices, I spoke with Tao from Vienna. Tao shared her inspiring story about studying in Ireland. Her experience as an international student, education opportunities, and some of the challenges that she has been through during her study. Good afternoon, Tao. First, thank you for giving me a chance to interview you and share your story with us. Could you please tell us why you are here in Ireland? Good afternoon, Tulip. It's really nice to have the chance to talk to you again today. So my name is Tao and I'm from Vietnam. So I'm here in Ireland to, to study my master's degree. I'm studying master's in international development in University College Dublin. Why did you choose to study an international development course? I started with my career before this study. I was uh, working in an NGO in Vietnam before. With that line of work, I uh, was mainly with uh, in youth empowerment. I really want to build my career in, in that field, working with youth, helping them to contribute to society. My major in, in my bachelor's degree was in international economics. So that helps a little bit, but that doesn't like fully align with what I'm with, what I was doing before. So I felt like I need to study more. I need to get myself prepared more with international, like with knowledge and international uh, experience so that I can help their young people in Vietnam better. So that's the reason why I chose to come to Ireland to study that major. How did you support yourself during your study? I've got a scholarship from uh, the Irish government. I am really grateful for that. It doesn't only provide me with funding, but it also provides me with a lot of support along the way and the chance to um, connect with like-minded people and other fellows in the same scholarship from all around the world. That is a really once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for me. Yeah. Could you tell me how did you prepare to win a scholarship? What I think is the most important thing to prepare for a scholarship is that you need to understand your yourself very well, understand the reason why you need to and why you want to come to Ireland to study and why is the study in Ireland is the good opportunity for you and also for the program that accepts you as well. So I think all those things are very important. Uh, you, you need to understand and really dig deep into all those uh, elements if you want to get a scholarship and if you really want to get the most out of your study, out of your experience, you need to understand all those things I've mentioned earlier very well or else you're gonna waste your time and money and other people's time and money as well. There's a f- several uh, kinds of um, government scholarship, but along with that, individual universities like, for example, UCD are also providing a lot of different kinds of, of scholarship based on the majors or based on like it's a merit based uh, scholarship. So very a lot of different types of scholarship to uh, make sure that uh, men, as many people can get the chance to study as possible. As an international student, what struggles and challenges have you been through a year? The struggles and challenges of international students. I think the first thing is that our education system is is different. So it takes some time to get get used to it and then to prepare myself and um, get the best out of the uh, study provided to me. So that is the first thing. The second thing is that as an international student, and especially coming from Vietnam, I think many other developing countries, one specific challenge that I have is are there admi- administration stuff. Uh, to get the RIP card, the, the Irish residence permit card, I arrived here in the beginning of September, but I 
didn't get an appointment until um, the beginning of November. And then the, the car is only delivered to me until mid of December. So that's a lot of time to get myself some things that I have the permit to, to stay here in Ireland to, to start to study. And then when I'm doing my internship, I have opportunity to do, um, to attend a training in an European country, but getting a visa appointment for those European countries can be very difficult. Um, it can take me up to like two months waiting for a visa appointment. And it's totally by chance. A lot of those things, it happens by chance. So if I came onto this, uh, the portal at, at the right time, and there, there wouldn't be slot, visa slots for me to attend, to, to book. But if it's not the right time, then it is all booked in advance. If I want to get the visa to like, for say, for example, to, um, start my sh training in September, then I would need to allow at least three weeks before that for the processing seen the date of visa appointment to the date I received the visa. And then to get the visa appointment, it's going to be like, I should prepare at least one month or two months before that. So that's a lot of time considering that I only have one year to study here in Ireland. So that is a big challenge for me. Accommodation in Ireland is high demanding. How did you secure your accommodation? I was lucky to secure uh, an accommodation with our um, school campers. But uh, when the school, the second trimester ends, when about like around May um, this year, uh, we have to move out because that's the, that's when the period, the renting period ends in, in the school campus. And I have already started looking from, from the end of March to make sure that by the middle of May, I have somewhere to move out to, to live. Yeah, accommodation is a nice challenge for um, international students as well. I think it's a challenge for almost like everyone that comes to Ireland lately, not only international students, but people come here to work as well, because there's not a lot in the financial range that international student can afford like for example a room here in in dublin a single room with um um with their bathroom the private bathroom included in it can cost like from 800 to like more than 1000 um euros why in many other countries that can cover for like a whole apartment. So that is really difficult to find. I've, I've been, been warned about their housing crisis in Ireland, actually. What do you miss most about Vienna? What I miss most is my family and friends, definitely. And then the food and the food, the kind of food service that allows me to eat cake at 10 p.m. if I want to. Here they like are like pubs that open from um, 12 p.m. until midnight. Bakeries and coffee a place only open until 4, 4 p.m. So if I want to eat cake after that, I cannot. And that is really what I miss about Vietnam. They can that I can have, um, that I can have like, um, pho, Vietnamese noodles, Vietnamese rice noodles at 6.30, uh, in the morning. I, and I can have cake at, um, 10 p.m. in the evening at, at 10 p.m. if I want to. Of course, that is not what I, um, what, what I do every day because it's not healthy, but it's just that it allows me to do that. And then the third thing is that I was able to go everywhere with my scooter. Like I can go from my house to the city center is seven kilometers and I can take, it can take me about 20 minutes on my scooter to, to do that. But 
it's a shorter it's a shorter uh, distance here from um, my my accommodation now to the city city center, but it takes longer, much longer than that. So I miss the freedom that I've got with the with with my scooter in Vietnam. Could you please tell me what's your first impression about Ireland? It's really wet, just as I expected, because. Uh, People have been people have been talking about that as one main thing about um, Irish weather that it rains all the time. Yeah, that is my first impression. The very the very first one, very brief one. But then, it might be very unexpected. But I've come to love that kind of Irish weather because, of course, it rains a lot, but it it clears up really quickly. So one moment it can be sunny, it can be cloudy. The next moment it can be a, ra- a hailstorm. And then five, 10 minutes later, the whole sky clears up and the sun is out and it's lovely again. Like like never, ne- nothing happened before. So I actually love it about the Irish weather because it gives me how to say a sense of hope it's going to be not going to be a bad day for a long time that's what that's what i've come to know about the irish weather is there anything that you love about living in ireland there's there are a few things that i love about ireland the first thing is about irish people i work in an ngo and that uh, my colleagues has several of my colleagues had the chance to go to ireland for business trips before and uh, from their experience, from what they have told me, and from my experience working with Irish volunteers, I have a very good feeling about Irish people, that they are very kind-hearted. And then it turns out that I I was right, because when I came here in Ireland, people are very, uh, people are nice, they are polite, and they are patient with me when I try to explain myself in in English, not my, it's not my first language. So people are patient with me. When you run for a bus and the bus drivers see you, they will stop at the bus stop and wait, and then just wait for you running like, like maybe half a street to get on the bus. And, <laughs> and that's really, that is really nice. That is really nice. When I am working part time in a in a restaurant as well, and when I ask people to please bear with me because I cannot catch their address or their phone numbers, they are patient with me. They are telling me it, it's fine, take your time, stuff like that. They have been really nice and and helpful. The, that's those are the people I've encountered. And then another thing that I love about Ireland is that. It's also one of the reasons why I, I, I really want to co- come to Ireland is that it's the impression that Ireland is really green. So that's, that's what I love. I love nature. I love trekking, hiking. And then I've come to Ireland and people love the same thing in their scenery around really allows me to, 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 to do that, to uh, go out and enjoy nature and enjoy walking around. What really surprised me is that Ireland seems to be, and, and Dublin seems to be really green, but do you know that the forestry, forest coverage of Ireland is second lowest among EU countries? So it's really a shock to me that the forest coverage is only about like 2%, um, is only about 2% and it has actually moved from the lowest coverage to the second lowest recent, just recently. Yeah, that is one thing I am still like very, it, it still surprised, like it still surprised me every time. Besides your area of study, what education and job opportunities did you come across? Apart from my study, um, there's a lot of opportunity to enhance my 
skills, my knowledge, and my network as well. As in, there are there are workshops, seminars、um, provided by、um, NGOs and organizations around the country, like throughout the country. And then there is volunteering opportunities as well. So those are really are important. Those are really helpful. It's not difficult to get a part-time job that can help you earn pocket money, but to get a job that really aligns with what you study and really allows you the chance to、um, to further your study and your skills and your knowledge and your network related to your career, that takes a lot of investment of your time and effort. I'm really lucky to to、uh, to be doing my internship at a a place that that is really close to to what I want to do later in my career. So, what's your future plan after your graduation? My future plan is what I、uh, is the reason why I came to Ireland before, and it didn't stay the same. That、um, I want to come back to Vietnam. I want to、uh, work. In an NGO, governmental bodies, or in a business, maybe. But in any position, I would love to be able to help young people in Vietnam to have better to contribute to to their development and to contribute to their growth. That they have better skills, better knowledge, and they have better opportunities as well to、uh, to do the good things for themselves and to do the good things、uh, for our、uh, community. So that is my future plan. It's still it's still very vague by now, but that's what I want to do in the long term. So I'm gonna focus my.、Um, My effort around that to find opportunities around that. Is there anything you would like to add that has not been asked? What I want to add is that、um, I know that a lot of universities. I I don't know, I don't know all the universities, but UCD and many other universities that my friends are attending, they have support program for international students. Uh, like a like a buddy like alumni program, and that is where I've I've got to meet my my buddy, an UCD alumni that I really appreciate. There's a few、uh, things I I want to to share to other students that come to study in Ireland, and there's there are two things actually. So the first thing is that as administration stuff out of the way as soon as possible. Get your a、uh, call for the appointment to get your RIP card.、Um, get the PPSN number.、Um, if you want to travel to、um, other countries, get your visa early. Get all the administration stuff early because they are not in your control. So get it. Done. Get them done soon, and then you can carry on with other plans of yours. That is the first、um, advice. Not real advice, but like just a piece of tip. And then the second thing is that, like I mentioned, the weather here change any moment, and this is the best moment to do anything. So if you want to go outside, just just do it. Just there's no better moments than this. What did you learn from Ireland? This is the the most impressive one that I've got is that it's always important to ask and get consent because there are many different elements in in countries in in different countries that you may never know about or may never heard about it before. But like for example, it's Totally normal in your country to do this one thing, but it's offensive to other people in other country to do that. So don't assume 
anything and you need to ask to be sure and to show that you are respectful and it's important in in an international environment uh, in an international context like this Tao, thank you for sharing your experience with us and wishing you best of luck in your future endeavors. Yeah, thank you for asking me, asking me <laughs> to be your interviewee. Thank you for listening to our podcast. I hope all of you will learn the life of an international student in Ireland. All the podcasts in the series are available on our website, www.developmentperspectives.ie on the podcast platform.